It's the bottom of the ninth. Two outs. Can he do it? That's what this video is all about today. This is a video by Foolish Baseball that we're going to be reacting to. Recommended by one of you guys in the comments, so thank you for that. We're going to see some clutch moments in baseball. I know this video is going to be a banger. I just know it. Let's jump into this and see some of these clutch moments. Do subscribe if you are new around here or if you're old and you've been watching my videos. Subscribe. Okay, let's go. Okay, bottom of the night. Two outs. I like this commentary. The hero. Wasted. <laughs> this is the moment I dreamt about as a kid in the backyard. Oh. Rats. Maybe it's not going to be clutch moments. My team is counting on me. <laughs> I thought it was going to be clutch moments. If you've watched enough Major League Baseball, you I've know not. what happens next. You I don't. know Brett Phillips gets the two strike hit. You know Chris Taylor bobbles the ball. You know Randy Arozarena rounds third and slips going for home, but Max Muncy and Will Smith fail to connect on the throw, what is allowing the Rays to walk it off. These moments are a joy to look back on, but knowing the outcome resolves the <laughs> tension. Rewatching after the fact is inherently different from experiencing the moment live. Okay. So, in order to appreciate the drama of bottom of the ninth, two outs, I've selected two regular season games, one from 2011 and one from 2015, in the hopes you've either long forgotten what transpired or never saw what happened in the first place. Well, I am the latter. I've never seen any of these moments because I'm new to baseball, right? Just be play the these game and will be the show. aren't new, but maybe they'll be new to you. They are. Will the 2011 Mariners complete their madcap comeback? I don't know. Will the surging 2015 Blue Jays get a key win against their division rivals? Maybe. You're about to find out. Unless you already know, in which case, you're a sicko. A baseball sicko. That's you guys. Get some help. Get some help. Stop watching British guys watch baseball videos. Get some help. Because Julio <laughs> Rodriguez was just 10 years old at the time, the 2011 Mariners Yo. weren't very good at baseball. After a 101 loss season the previous year, Seattle was off to a lousy start in April, losing seven in a row before their eventful evening versus the Blue Jays. The game kicked off with a bona fide rarity at the time, a bad start. He just said they were on a seven game loss until this game, so he's kind of give it away there, right? From Felix Hernandez, who allowed seven runs in what would be his worst game of the season. The light in the darkness of the Mariners franchise was thoroughly extinguished in this one. Hold on a sec, Corey Patterson played for the Blue Jays? When Luis Rodriguez, remember the name, struck out to begin the bottom of the seventh, the Blue Jays' win probability was rounded up to 100%. Of course, the only reason to look at a win probability graph is when a team launches a crazy comeback, and that's just what the Mariners did. In the eighth inning, Octavio Dotel and Mark Repchinski combined to issue not one, just not walking two, everyone. not four, you walk, you walk. but three bases loaded walks. That's After terrible. a Justin Smoke two-run single brought the game within one, Sean Camp entered the scene and immediately coaxed a crucial double play. The Tough. 2011 Blue Jays weren't terrible, but the 2015 Blue Jays? That team was something special. <laughs> With the slimmest of division leads, they took on the Yankees in Toronto on August 14th of that year, looking for their first playoff berth since they won the World Series in 1993. Having traded for Josh Donaldson in the offseason and David Price at the trade deadline, this was a compelling squad, and the fans in Toronto were beyond stoked for them. They led for most of the contest, but an eighth inning three-run homer by Ooh. Carlos Beltran flipped the game on its head, giving the Yankees a one-run lead going into the ninth. The 2011 Mariners were facing the exact same scenario. Going back Michael and forth. Saunders, himself a future Jays legend, what kicked things off in the ninth with a leadoff double. Stuck it down Brandon the line. Ryan, known more for his skills with the glove than the bat, bunted Saunders over to third. Adam Kennedy grounded out to short, but Saunders was unable to go home on the play. And when Camp went down 2-0 in the count versus each row, Blue Jays skipper John Farrell elected to intentionally walk him. Surprise! Ichiro was intentionally walked often, even though he didn't necessarily fit the profile. One, six, eight, walk. That brought up Luis Rodriguez with the tying and go-ahead runs on base. Bottom of the ninth, two outs, which is the title of the video. It is. Four years later in Toronto, Russell Martin flew out to begin the ninth. Chris Colabello drew a pinch hit walk and Cliff Pennington pinch ran for him. 
Kevin Pillar singled to give the Jays a second base runner, and although Ben Revere struck out, it was still costly as Yankee closer Andrew Miller's first pitch got away from Brian McCann, allowing both runners to advance 90 feet. As Troy Tulowitzki, who was also acquired for the playoff push, walked towards the batter's box, the Yankees discussed the mustache. I mean, <laughs> mustache the matchup. I mean, disgust the matchup. Sean Camp's first pitch to Luis Rodriguez is a solid five inches outside the strike zone, but he gets the call anyway. Umpire, Andrew what you doing? Miller's first pitch to Tulo is also a called strike with a great location. In case you haven't noticed, we're speaking in present tense now. Okay. Home plate umpire Scott Barry's call on strike one affects the next pitch to Luis Rodriguez. Sean Camp attacks outside once again, forcing Rodriguez to protect his now expanded strike zone. Rodriguez is quickly down 0-2, a daunting position for any hitter, two not out, just journeyman down utility two. infielders. In 2022, Major League Batsman had just a 160 average, 191 on base percentage, and 243 slugging after falling behind 0-2 so in the count. Camp tries to put Rodriguez away with a slider, but leaves it totally hanging. Rodriguez merely fouls it off rather than doing damage. Pitchers miss their target quite often. Throwing a little white ball 60 feet 6 inches with pinpoint accuracy every time is impossible, but it's also impossible for hitters to punish every mistake. There's fundamentally no difference between these Chris Bubich changeups thrown right down the middle to Shohei Otani, but while one results in strike two, the other is struck 470 <sighs> feet into the bleachers in right center. Not every mistake is punishable either. Yo. Even Clayton Kershaw's command falters from time to time, as he's thrown nearly a thousand curveballs and sliders above the strike zone over the years. Moving to our 2015 matchup, Andrew Miller is trying to provide continuity for the Yankees. He's replacing David Robertson as New York's closer, who himself replaced Marinara Riviera. <laughs> His follow-up to a nasty slider for strike one is a fastball that fails to find the zone. The count Bum -bum. is even. This prompts Miller to have a discussion with his catcher, Brian McCann, something the two of them already did as Troy Tulowitzki walked up to the plate. The discussion ends and Miller throws a slider that is fouled off for strike two. It's his trademark pitch, the one that ultimately defined his career both in pinstripes and later on with Cleveland. From 2014 to the end of his career, he cut down on his fastball usage to throw more sliders, mirroring league-wide trends. Tulo proceeds to foul back Miller's next offering. It goes without saying, but I'm still gonna say it. If he whiffs, the game is over. Miller challenges Tulo. How is he setting us up here? Is one gonna succeed and one gonna fail? Witzke with another slider that he rips foul. Both he hasn't succeed, put the right? ball in play, but the quality pitches. of contact has improved over the last three sliders. Even down 1-2 in the count, it feels like the tables are shifting towards Tulo. Luis Rodriguez, meanwhile, is down 0-2 in Seattle in 2011, before we stopped Joseph Coney. Sean Camp's fourth <laughs> yeah, pitch of robot. the at bat is a slider outside. Ichiro swipes second without a throw as the Jays fear a potential game-tying delayed double steal. You know, the play that looks like this. The trade-off is that the winning run reaches scoring position, and the winning run is, well, Ichiro, who is nothing less than one of the finest base runners in MLB history. With two outs, he can score easily on anything that reaches the outfield grass, which would walk off the game for Seattle. Well, I wanna know. Hold on, babe, just a sec. I'm talking to my buddy Brian, again. <laughs> With Tulowitzki calibrated to the slider, Miller and McCann opt for another fastball, which once again fails to find the zone or coax a swing. When Miller offers up another slider on his seventh two, pitch two. of the at-bat, Tulo makes great contact, hitting the ball 105 miles per hour at a 19-degree launch angle. The ball goes well foul, though, and with that, there's only one thing to do. Talk, Talk to, Brian. to Brian McCann. How many times can you do that? Can you just keep... Because that's surely that's putting off the batter as well. Again. Sean Camp gets exactly what he wants with two strikes. He throws a changeup below the zone, and Luis Rodriguez chases. But he fouls it off. 
that pitch was a mere one foot above the ground. In the pitch tracking era, 65% of swings at pitches that height have resulted in nothing but a cool breeze. Yet Rodriguez stays alive. It's time for the sixth pitch of this at bat. That's two miraculous foul balls in a row. Rodriguez just nicks it in the end. If football is a game of inches, baseball is a game of millimeters. I will now use Google Earth to take you from Seattle back to Toronto. He's long Andrew Miller <laughs> offers up a third fastball, and for the third time, it's taken for a ball. That runs the count to full. It's obvious what's going through Miller and McCann's minds. I can't throw another fastball. I hope he doesn't talk to me again. I'm tired of getting up. <laughs> oh, Brian. Sure, first base is open, but a walk would bring up Josh Donaldson, who is not only in the middle of an MVP season, but in the middle of a monster August where he clubbed 11 homers. Best to try your luck with Tulowitzki. I can't face Josh Donaldson. He was on History Channel's Vikings. The battle continues. Tulowitzki fouls off yet another slider. See? It's not that impressive. I can do it too, alright? Sean Camp throws another hanging slider that is just fouled off. How Rodriguez's many is first this? instincts were probably that the pitch was a fastball given its height. Camp's reaction says it all. He made a mistake, but was also tantalizingly close to his desired outcome of a strikeout. This is unfamiliar territory for him. Camp made over 500 big league appearances, but recorded just 12 saves in his career. Will this be one of them? Level 4, late game, this is got to be it, right? Although oh, no, both end these game games are in the bit, exact same situation, bottom of the ninth, two outs, tying run on third, winning run on second, the atmospheres are totally different. Mariners fans are at a Monday night game in April with an official attendance of 13,000. Those that remain Tough. have seen a team that lost seven straight, been down seven runs, and their <laughs> final at bat, that seven pitches vibing. and counting. Pride is what's at stake here, and you can't help but smile whenever plucky Luis Rodriguez swings wildly at every Sean Camp offering, barely fouling pitches off, but living to fight another day. The game in Toronto has much greater season implications. It's a Friday night affair with 47,000 in attendance, Yo, the winner of which will have the AL East division lead in August. The at-bat between Miller and Tulowitzki is being washed through fingers by fans who can hardly look. <laughs> and it's loud in Rogers Center, especially when Andrew Miller is talking to Brian McCann <laughs> again. Are you serious? Sure, you can't just keep in doing that. In 2023, teams are allowed five mound visits per okay. nine innings. Miller and McCann have visited five times during this at-bat alone. Is it excessive or just ratcheting up the drama? Probably both, if we're being honest. Tulowitzki is out in front of the 10th pitch of this at bat, and the 11th is a repeat of the 10th. Tulo has somehow fought off six two-strike sliders from Andrew Miller, it's still full count, and Josh Donaldson is still on deck. In Seattle, Luis Rodriguez takes Camp's eighth offering for a ball. After some hacking earlier, it seems like a great take, but is it? This pitch was actually well in the strike zone, but the missed target and awkward receiving from catcher JPR and Sebia fools the umpire. Okay. We're reaching the end. Here's pitch number nine. Breaking ball hit deep to late, but foul. Foul. Whew. Did your heart skip a beat a there? It's a well-located slider from camp, but Rodriguez pounces on it. This might be the most solid contact we've seen in either at bat. In Toronto, there's gamesmanship afoot. Gamesmanship is, of course, a nice word for time wasting. My guy's dragging Tulo this steps out. steps in the box, He's Miller steps me. off the me. mound. The Blue Jays crowd awaits the thrilling conclusion. Is this the thrilling conclusion? We got a minute 38 left. Right, if this guy has made this video and they both strike out, I'm going to be fuming. I'm going to be fuming. Come on. Here we go. Toronto Blue Jays, what have you got? And the breaches, he struck him out! And the Yankees win 4-3! It feels unexpected. This at bat was nearly nine minutes long in real time, yet it ends so suddenly. Miller gets the strikeout as the Yankees take the division lead. 
they win this battle, but they don't win the war, as the Jays indeed win the AL East while the Yankees settle for a wildcard spot. And despite a franchise-defining moment from Jose Bautista later that October, neither team wins the pennant. Which means all that's left is... Look for you guys. Oh! Yeah! We go on, we go on. It's not a home run, but we win the game. I was going to be fuming if they were both fails. The broadcast fails. booth and sparse Mariners crowd are overcome with joy. In a sea of seasons to forget, Luis Rodriguez, <laughs> what a of all people, has given them a moment worth remembering. There's the pitch breakdown for you guys. Game over. Thank you so You know what, this video was really good, like, it, it, it kind of dragged it out, I'm not going to lie, but there was a bit of humor in there, right, I guess called foolish baseball he's having a bit of fun there thank you for the recommendation i really enjoyed this video we definitely will check out more of his videos let me know down in the comments one did you watch any of these games live were you in the stadium i doubt it but maybe one of you were maybe just maybe and two did you enjoy this video subscribe guys please subscribe give the video a like i'll see you for the next one take it easy peace